Hi, this is another Mrs H psychology revision video. Here we are, are looking at ad the addiction topic and specifically risk factors. Okay, so this is the first little video on risk factors and it's number one, genetic vulnerability. So here we have risk factors um, in addiction. Basically a risk factor is anything internal or external that increases the chance that somebody's going to um, use a, an addictive drug or engage in an addictive behavior. And the first one we're going to look at is genetic vulnerability. So here we're looking at, and we use these two texts, Illuminate and Hodder, and it's important for us to, first of all, make very really clear that addiction itself is not inherited, but a predisposition or a vulnerability to, for example, drug dependence is. Okay, so if we look at two plausible direct genetic explanations, First of all, that there are low numbers of D2 dopamine receptors. That seems to be linked to addiction. So the proportion of receptors in the brain are determined genetically. So therefore, genetics determine the number of dopamine receptors of an individual. We also know that individuals who are able, more able to metabolize, break down certain substances, might be at greater risk of becoming addicted as well to a particular substance. So for example, in about 50% of Asian people, um, they are unable to metabolize alcohol to release the acetic acid in their urine. So when they consume alcohol, it makes them actually feel nauseous. All right? And that means that they're very much less likely to become addicted because obviously they always feel sick when they drink alcohol. So if, you, if that's going to be the case, you're just going to learn um, a response of feeling nauseous when you drink, therefore less likely to drink. We can also look at indirect evidence that, um, of genetic uh, vulnerability. So genetics may also play an indirect role, for example, in your personality in terms of perhaps something like self-control and also the ability to regulate your emotions. So, for example, if a person has difficulty controlling their behavior when they're young, they may have end up with poor outcomes in school. And obviously that could spiral into disruptive behavior. Um, which could have the consequence of having low achievement and may lead to vulnerability to maybe experiment with certain substances. So it's not just direct, but indirectly as well. And now we're going to look at the research evidence. So there are different ways that we can get our evidence. There's different ways that we've got uh, research to support this, um, this idea of a genetic vulnerability. And uh, so one example is using twin studies. So all major studies for alcoholism, for example, in twins, have found that MZ twins are more concordant than DZ twins. MZ monozygotic, DZ dizygotic. Um, so these are identical twins, and these are non-identical um, twins. Okay, so identical twins have 100% the same genotype compared with 50% the same in DZ twins, because these are just like siblings who happen to be born at the same time. And so all major studies for alcoholism have basically found that identical twins are more concordant, in other words, more similar in their, um, their outcomes, for example, with alcoholism. An example of this comes specifically from Magoo, 1992, using interviews with MZ and DZ twins on their alcohol use and using the DSM-3 criteria. What they found was that the MZ had 77% concordance and the DZ only 20, uh, sorry, 54%, suggesting a genetic influence on alcohol abuse. The thing is that MZ twins also have, as we know, they have the same genotype, 100% identical. So we would, if it was just purely genetic, we would expect 100% concordance. And that's not what we get. So clearly the environment has a big impact also on this. Another bit of further evaluation we could add, MZ twins are the same sex always um, because they're genetically identical. So they are going to experience much more similar environments. They're going to be treated much more similarly than DZ, who might look different, um, who may look different, um, may have different characteristics. DZ obviously could be different sexes, for example. So it's actually very difficult to separate out the environment from genetics here. If we look at further research, we've got Kendler's research on twin studies from the Swedish Twin Registry using almost 9,000 twin pairs over 40 years. So nice bit of detail there. And he found concordance rates for MZ to be consistently higher than DZ. And they stayed constant over that time, again, supporting a genetic component to alcohol abuse. 
Um, we also look at Kender's adoption studies, in which he looked at studies where the adult had been adopted away as a child from biological parents in, um, in couples in which at least one of the parents had an addiction. And the results were that those adopted individuals had a significantly greater risk of developing an addiction themselves compared with those adopted away from a family with no addicted parent. So 8.6% in those with a, with a parent who had an addiction compared with only 4.2% of those who hadn't. We can also see here De Franza found that 10% of those addicted to nicotine had experienced strong cravings for it two days after their first inhalation of it, and 35% of them experienced strong cravings after a month. So this group with early strong cravings were 200 times more likely to become daily smokers than a group without these strong initial cravings. Again, suggesting that there's something different about them in terms of their biological um, way of processing it, their genetic vulnerability, in other words. And then now we just look at some more evaluation. Okay, so further evaluation if you need it. Uh, genetic vulnerability is an interaction of genes and environment. And um, so obviously if we're never exposed environmentally to that substance, we're never going to become addicted to it. So even though we've got a genetic vulnerability, you know, there is choice in that as well. And that's important. Uh, genetic links are just one possible risk factor. Um, but there are also important alternative, if you like, causes for addiction. So environmental factors like stress that we're going to talk about in, in another video. Um, also, the, the issues that we've mentioned over twin studies above and the genetic link seems to vary across substances, which means that vulnerability doesn't seem general, but more specific to specific substances. So someone might not realize they have a genetic vulnerability to a specific substance um, if they, again, if they haven't been exposed to it. So that's the end of the genetic vulnerability little video. The next one is stress.